And this is part two of the first segment of Shabbat service for Waymaker Messianic Jewish and Christian Center USA. This is Saturday, September 4th, 2021 on the Gregorian calendar and on the Hebrew calendar. It is a low, the 27th day, 5781. We have completed the Torah portion in the first uh, part of segment one, and we're going to move on to the half Torah portion, which will um, consist of Isaiah chapter 61, verse one through 63, verse 19. So essentially chapters 61 through 63 is our half Torah portion for today. So we were, we're gonna get started with that. Beisara for the broken hearted, and Beisara means good news. The Ruach Adonai Elohim is on me because Adonai has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives. This sounds like Yeshua. This was what Yeshua was here also for. And the opening of the prison to those who are bound to proclaim the year of Adonai's favor and a day of our God's vengeance, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of Adonai, that he may be glorified yeah, this is absolutely a type and shadow of Yeshua. They will rebuild the ancient ruins. They will restore former desolations. They will repair the ruined cities and desolations of many just generations. Strangers will stand and shepherd your flock. Children of foreigners will be your plowmen and vine dressers, but you will be called the Kohanim of Adonai. They will speak of you as the ministers of our God. You will eat the wealth of nations and boast in their abundance. Instead of your shame, double portion. Instead of disgrace, they will sing for joy. Therefore, in their land, they will inherit a double portion. They will have everlasting joy. For I, Adonai, love justice. I hate robbery in the burnt offering. In faithfulness, I will reward my people and cut an external covenant with them. Then their offspring will be known among the nations, their descendants among the peoples. All who see them will recognize them, for they are the seed that Adonai has blessed. I will rejoice greatly in Adonai. My soul will be joyful in my God. He has clothed me with garments of salvation. He has wrapped me in a robe of righteousness, like a bridegroom wearing a priestly turban, like a bride adorning herself with her jewels. As the earth brings forth its sprouts, and as a garden causes things sown to spring up, Adonai Elohim will cause justice and praise to spring up before all the nations. In chapter 62, Watchmen for Jerusalem. And this is, this is a prophesied promise to Israel. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her righteousness shines out brightly and her salvation as a blazing torch. Nation, nations will seek your righteousness and all kings your glory. You will be called by a new name, which Adonai's mouth will bestow. You will also be a crown of beauty in the hand of Adonai and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. No longer will you be termed forsaken. No longer your land termed desolate. Instead, you will be called my delight in her and your land married. For Adonai delights in you, and your land will be married. For as a young man marries a virgin, so your sons will marry you. As a bridegroom rejoices over a bride, so your God will rejoice over you. On your walls, Jerusalem, I have set watchmen. All day and all night, they will never hold their peace. You who remind Adonai, take no rest for yourselves, and give him no rest until he establishes and makes Jerusalem a praise in the earth. Adonai has sworn by his right hand and by his strong arm, surely I will never again give your grain as food for your enemies, nor will foreigners drink your new wine for which you have labored. But those who have garnered it will eat it and praise Adonai, and those who have gathered it will drink it in the courts of my sanctuary. Go through, go through the gates, clear the way for the people, build up, build up the highway, Remove the stones, lift up a banner over the peoples. 
behold, Adonai has proclaimed to the end of the earth, say to the daughter of Zion, behold, your salvation comes. See, his reward is with him. See, his reward is with him and his recompense before him. Then they will call them the holy people, the redeemed of Adonai, and you will be called out, sought out, a city not forsaken. And a diadem, we mentioned, that was mentioned in this chapter, is a jeweled crown. And it's, it's worn as a symbol of sovereignty. Wine press of vengeance. This will happen when God's wrath comes on the earth as well. This is also prophetic. Who is this coming from Eden in crimson garments from Basra? This one splendid in his apparel, pressing forward in his great might. It is I who speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Why is your apparel so red and your garments like one who treads in a wine press? I've trodden in the wine press alone from the peoples. No man was with me. I trod them in my anger and trampled them in my wrath. Their lifeblood spattered my garments, so I stained all my robes. For a day of vengeance was in my heart, and my year of redemption has come. I looked, but there was no one to help. I was amazed, but no one was assisting. So my own arm won victory for me, and my wrath upheld me. So I trod down the peoples in my anger and made them drunk in my wrath, and I poured out their lifeblood on the earth. Remembering his chesed, and that's grace, or also it could be uh, compassion. I will remember the loving kindnesses of Adonai, the praises of Adonai, according to all that Adonai has granted us, and the great goodness toward the house of Israel, which he has granted them according to his compassion and according to his abundance of his loving kindnesses or grace. For he said, surely they are my people, children who will not deal falsely. So he became their savior. In all their affliction, he was afflicted. So the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and in his mercy, he redeemed them. Then he lifted them and carried them all the days of old. But they rebelled and grieved his Ruach HaKadosh. So he turned to become their enemy. He himself fought against them. Then his people remember the days of old, the days of Moses, where is he who brought them through the sea with a shepherd of his flock? Where is he who put among them his Ruach HaKadosh? Who caused his glorious arm to go at the right hand of Moses? Who divided the waters before them to make himself a name forever? Who led them through the depths like a horse in the desert? They did not stumble. Like cattle, they go down into a valley. The Ruach Adonai gave them rest. So you led your people to make yourself a glorious name. Look down from heaven and see from your holy, glorious, lofty abode. Where are your zeal and mighty deeds? Are the yearnings of your heart, your compassions withheld from me? You, for you are our father, even if Abraham would not know us or Israel not recognize us. You, Adonai, are our father, our redeemer. From everlasting is your name. Adonai, why do you cause us to stray from your ways and harden our heart from fearing you? Return for your servants' sake, the tribes of your heritage. Briefly, you, your holy people possessed it. Our foes have trampled your sanctuary. We have become like those over whom you have never ruled, like those not called by your name. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains might quake at your presence. I think we're waiting for that today, <laughs> for the presence of the Lord um, to come down and write all that is just out of uh, out of sorts. Um, our world is definitely upside down today as well. So as we can see in, in these verses, in some of these, the, some of these passages, um, obviously, you know, there, there was a, a falling away, which was, which was warned um, when we read the Torah portion. So that is the end of the half Torah portion. 
and I am going to um, do a recap right now of both the Torah portion, uh, real briefly, and the half Torah portion. And this is going to be a very short um, actual um, second part. Like I said, I wanted to have it all in one in one part, um, but uh, the recording, the online recorder to record this was not cooperating very well. So um, that's why we have a second part this week. The Parashat of Nitzavim, you are standing, includes some of the most fundamental principles of our faith. The unity of Israel, we, uh, it was addressed that they stood together, all of them, before Adonai, their God, our God. Um, the heads, the tribes, the elders, the officers, every man, every young one, every woman, every stranger in the gate, from the wood chopper to the water bearer. Um, and so they were all addressed. The future redemption. Moses warned of the exile and desolation of the land that would result if, if Benai Israel abandoned Adonai's laws. But then he prophesied also in the end that if they returned to Adonai, our God, if the outcasts shall be at the ends of the heaven from there, the, the, the Lord would gather them if they were truly repentant and loved the Lord with all their heart and soul and came back, that he would bring them back to the land which the fathers have possessed. And the practicality of Torah for the mitzvah, um, which was commanded to them, um, it was said it's not too hard for them. Um, and it's not far from them, it's not it's not far and remote from them. It is not in heaven, it is not across the sea, but it, it is very close in their mouth, in their heart, that they may do it. It was placed in their hearts. And the freedom of choice. God has always given us the freedom of choice, even from the very beginning with Adam and Eve. Of course, we know they chose wrong. Um, which is why we have all the problems that we have today. But, but Yeshua gave us back the victory. He gave us back that dominion. And we have to remember that. And as a people of God, if you're born again and you're saved and you're part of the family of God, we also need to rise up as an army of God because there is spiritual warfare going on. There is definite spiritual warfare from the evil side. That, you know he's you know the devil's already been defeated however he has he, he he still manages to confuse and cause chaos and act like he still has a dominion and he doesn't so we need to we need to execute the authority that Yeshua gave to us instead of sitting quietly and not doing anything we need to rise up as an army of God no what our role in these days are, and we need to engage in spiritual warfare. We need to equip ourselves so we are able to do so, because there is a battle, and it is not against flesh and blood, but it is against the principalities of evil and darkness. But we need to know our authority in Yeshua. He gave it to us. So it's time to stand up and say, enough. And rebuke the devil, rebuke his minions of evil, and put them in their place under our feet. We have a freedom of choice. What was addressed here in the Torah is um, I have set before you life and goodness, death, and evil. We have that choice today. Just want to remind you that choice we have today. We have life and goodness with Yeshua, accepting Yeshua as our as our Lord and Savior, and accepting the salvation that He offers and eternal life. Or if you reject Him, you're not going to have that. You're going to have death and you know and evil with you. But know that your spirit goes on for. Ever. So choose this day whom you will serve. And if you choose to serve the death and evil side, you're going to be tormented for all eternity. And we'll talk about that when we get into the altar call in, in just, a, you know, in the second segment of Shabbat service. And then I command you this day to love Adonai, to walk in his ways and keep his commandments. Life and death I have set before you. Blessing and curse. 
and you shall choose life. He, Moses was encouraging the people to choose life, not death. Now, the half Torah of this week, we read from the book of Isaiah, chapter 61 through 63. The, um, this week's half Torah is the seventh and final installment of a series of seven half Torah of consolation. And these seven half Torah uh, commence on the Shabbat following Tishba'av and continue until Rosh Hashanah. This week, we will be celebrating Rosh Hashanah, the, the new year, um, the Feast of Trumpets. It's coming this coming week. Uh, so it's leading right up to this. The prophet Isaiah began on a high note describing the great joy that we will experience with the final redemption, comparing it to the joy of a newly married couple. Isaiah then declared his, his refusal to passively await the redemption. For Zion's sake, I will not remain silent. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not be still until a righteousness emerges like shining light. And he implored the stones of Jerusalem not to be silent day or night until Adonai restores Jerusalem and establishes it in glory. Haftarah then recounts Adonai's oath to eventually redeem Zion when the Jews will praise Adonai in Jerusalem. The Haftarah also contains a description of the punishment Adonai would mete out to Edom and the enemies of Israel. And that will be seen in future, you know, in the future. This is also very prophetic to the future. Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah concluded with a, with a famous statement, in all Israel's affliction, he too is afflicted, and the angel of his presence redeemed them like a loving father who shares the pain of his child. Adonai too shares the pain of his people and awaits the redemption along with them. So that is the end of the Torah and the half Torah portion, the first segment of this week's Shabbat service. So we're going to close this out with a closing prayer. Then we will come back with a Brit Pedashah. And then we will come back also um, with an altar call and then Holy Communion. And then we will close out Shabbat for this week. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for this powerful word. We thank you for the blessings that you, you give us daily. We thank you for choice. We thank you for our heart that is for you, that we choose wisely and we choose you at all times for you are our creator we are always connected to you spiritually because you made us you created us and you are our father and we love you we love you with all our heart soul and mind and our strength and we thank you we thank you for all that you do for us we thank you for this word for this mighty powerful word. Thank you for your son that you sent to die for us, for to take our sins away so that we may be redeemed and we have that final redemption for ourselves individually. And we know that we know that we know that we're yours forever. In eternity, we will be with you. And we thank you for that. We could never have done this on our own. Thank you. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Yeshua. We thank you for the Ruach HaKadosh that is, has been sent to us, that is with us all the time. In the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, Amen and Amen. Take a short break and we will come back with the second segment of Shabbat service.